you know, I, the Lord gave me something earlier um, last week that, that I wanted to bring up just again. It, it hit me early, early this morning. It hit me at the um, Dream Team rally in between services. Oh, listen, y'all, some of y'all don't know this. Before the services, we have the team that's going to be serving. Because it takes a lot to, to do this. And uh, so we, we uh, just have a, a mini rally. We pray together. We have a, just, uh, just a really good time before we get together. And the Lord laid it on my heart again. Um, just have a couple of prayer times during the week. We pray from 5.30 in the morning to 6.30. And then I have another one of those later on the week. But, but I, was with my, I was with one of my friends. And, and um, we got into this conversation and meditation and, and prayer about how often as believers we get into this, I call it performance Christianity. Maybe you've never heard of this phrase. It's like, I, I need to do all these good things. And, you know, I go to church and so then God loves me more. Or, or I, I, didn't, I didn't have road rage today, so God loves me more for that too. And just, I, I, I hugged and kissed my wife goodbye and, and the kids and patted them on the head. And I didn't kick the cat, so God loves me more now. And, and I, read my, I read three Bible, Bible verses today, so God loves me more. Or the other side of that is, oh, man, I slipped up. I was doing so good, and then I slipped up. On the, oh, God's got to be mad at me. And oh, oh I, I ran a bright orange light. You know, it wasn't quite red. Yeah, it was, but I don't want to admit it. So he's got to be mad at me. I yelled at the cashier because she didn't give my change back. She said she did. She said I stole. She called me a liar, so I yelled back. He's got to be mad at me for that. And so we get into this. We get into this. Do's and don'ts. We get into these right and wrongs. I'm not saying you shouldn't do the right thing. God see you do the right thing. God will see it. He'll honor it and he'll work on your behalf. But you don't base your existence and your walk with God based on the do's and the don'ts, the, the good and the evil. We don't do that. If you do, you're missing out on the best part of relationship. And so as we were praying and I was meditating on uh, the good and the evil and the knowledge of good and evil. And I just thought about in the, in the Garden of Eden, there were two trees. There was, the, there was the tree of life in the middle of the paradise of God. And really close to that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I said, God, I would just like a divine redo. Why can't we just go back to the garden and just say, hey, I'm so sorry I messed up. I don't, I, don't want, I don't even want to be a part of this knowledge of good and evil. But how many of you know that this saying, ignorance is bliss, is really a true statement? If you don't know, then you don't know, and you don't have to deal with what you don't know when you don't know. But then there's a tree of life in the middle of paradise with God where all you need to know is him, and in him is life. I just, and I said it again, I said, God, I just, I just want a divine redo where I don't have to partake of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, where I can just partake of the tree of life. He says, I already gave you your divine redo. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. Where what we can't do, God did by sending his son, Jesus, the, the, the sin in the flesh to pay the final, once and for all, final payment that we could forever be reconciled back to God. To get away from the do's and the don'ts and get back into life because Jesus, he said, I am. That's powerful right there. Even if you just full stop right there. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. You may be talking about a physical tree or a spiritual tree. I don't know. All I know is I'm so thankful that I don't have to live in this world of do's and don'ts. That I can live with my existence being plugged into and receiving from the tree of life. And his name is Jesus. And just stay in that place of relationship. Because I tell you what, once you move into the replace the, the move into that place of relationship, instead of a bunch of do's and don'ts, you move away from religion and you move into a place of relationship and you have fullness of life. Because that's who he is. Somebody give God praise for that. 
If I got to cut my message short because I shared that, well, we cut it short a little bit. Oh, what a great place to be. Father, just ask you your hand of blessing and anointing be upon every ear, upon every eye, and upon every heart as we go back and we look back at the, the last 20 years, but even before that. We thank you, Father, for an opportunity to honor, to celebrate, and to uh, look forward to great days ahead. Father, we thank you. You've kept us this far. You're keeping us today, and you're going to take us the rest of the way in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. So I'm going to read something to you just real quick. Uh, Pastor Vasek in, I believe it was July of 1990. So that was 31 years ago. God gave him the, the mission, the mandate, and basically a word called this place is. And, and uh, it was on a frame in, the, uh, in, the, um, in one of the rooms where we keep all the important documents. And it was in a frame in the closet. It used to be hanging on a wall somewhere. And when I pulled that out and I thought... And, and I, I'm not going to blame it on the Holy Spirit, but I really felt strongly, this hasn't changed. This is still who we are. See, it's important to recognize that we would not be where we are today had it not been for the pioneers, the forerunners, those that have uh, their efforts and their sacrifices that, that came before us, those things that they did. I want to just recognize a, a few people in the house Who's been connected? I'm not going to go all the way back. Well, I could, but then, then, I, then I would tell your age and you might get mad. Who, who's been connected to this house more than 30 years? Please, please stand your feet real quick. Come on. More than 30. Come on, give the Lord praise. You can't do that without Jesus. Thank you, 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 thank you. You may be seated. Those that walk beside us these last 20 years. Amy, you said it in the lobby a little while ago. Hey, you're thanking us. We're thanking you because there's no way we could have done this without you. The Lord gave this to Pastor Vasek, this prophetic word, 31 years ago. And it nails who we are today, where we were, but where we are, but also where we're going. I'm going to read these and then I'm going to go back and dig into the fake news that the enemy tried to make us buy on these things for the last 30 years and the truth of what it actually is today. The first one, it says, this place is like a wedding chapel where people are spiritually united with God and bonded together as a body. This place, everybody say this place. This place is like a hospital, a place of healing of the body and so, this place is like a gym, a place of the building of the spirit and the exercising of the gifts. This place is like a library, a college, a place where people can find wisdom, information, and answers. It's a learning center. This place is like a factory, everyone working, producing, and giving a unified effort each person has the opportunity to make a contribution to the success of the whole. Look at your neighbor and say, you have an opportunity too. This place, y'all can do better than that. This place is like a garden, a place where people flourish, bloom, achieve, love, feel beautiful, and produce fruit. This place is like a fruit stand, a place where the fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians 5.22 is shared with others as a witness. This place is like a temple, a place to worship God and to meet with Him and love Him. God's presence is to be manifested to all who enter. This place is like an army post, a place where, where soldiers are trained and made ready for battle. This place is like a banquet hall, a place of feasting, fellowship, and enjoyment. Come on, give the Lord praise. Oh, that's good, this place. I love this place. We get to do this. He's like, oh, man, do we really, do we really get to? No, we really get to do this. 
Oh, we're, you know, we're talking to architects right now. We're talking to uh, uh, other people, you know, permitting and all these different things. And, you know, if we go back and grow back the same pace from the first COVID to the second COVID. You remember it was before COVID and everybody, we got sick. Everybody ran for the hills. Anyway, came back and then there was, so that first wave, everybody was coming back. What do they call it? Like gangbusters, right? And then we, then we got COVID again. And then everybody disappeared, and now they're starting to come back again. If we come back at the same pace that we did the first time, then we'll be doing multiple services. We're going to be doing a lot of multiple services. I got people right now. There's, there's this place where I eat, eat breakfast with Amy every once in a while over by where we live. She says, come on, Pastor. When are we going to go back to Saturday night service? It's so, Mike was with me one day. She said, uh, she said, as soon as you open Saturday night, we're back. We want to, there's a community. We said no to Saturday night. And uh, you know what? It's one of my biggest regrets. And, and I'll just give this to you. It's kind of like a working meeting just real quick. And, and I've, told, I've told many of our teams this behind the scenes. The worst thing I could have done was cancel Saturday night service. Because I had this silly notion that um, Sunday morning culture needed to be exactly like Saturday night. There were just one big happy family and everybody needs to know each other. And everybody need. we all need to do it the same way and have the same values and all these other I don't care who you are or who we think we are or who's got the most brilliant ideas. Saturday night will never be like Sunday morning. There will be elements that are similar, but th there's, there's just a different flow and a vibe on Saturday, and that's okay. But we still provide uh, excellence in ministry, in service, in care, and give people a place to connect. So if you're looking for a place where you can serve in ministry, winning souls, changing lives, healing the sick, raising the dead, and doing all that other great stuff, River Praise is a place for you because we're getting ready to do a bunch of that. We'll get, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. So, so somebody said, well, Pastor, can you really preach six, seven services on a weekend? Yes. I would rather preach than go to Disney World. And I love me some Mickey Mouse. I'm just saying. So we're going to dig in. We're going to dig into this place is like, everybody say this place. It's like a wedding chapel where people are spiritually united with God and bonded together as a body. I want you to know the fake news is. Everybody say the fake news is. Okay, y'all didn't say it right. I said the fake news. We put that put that angry on it. The fake news. Fake news is, if you leave, you can never come back. Fake news. So so fake news. If my kids lost their mind, like some alien sucked their brain out, and they're just wandering around, and they said, "I don't even go to church anymore." If my kids ever did that. They already know. I have sleeping bags. I have hunting sleeping bags in closets. I will sleep on their front porch. And if I can't find them and they decide not to go back to church, if they ever say, like the prodigal son, uh, you know, I just I did too much and I'd already spent my inheritance. But you know what? They're going. My father's uh, workers are treated better than, than I'm being treated. I'm just going to go back home. Number one, if I'm not out looking for my kids, I'm going to be on that porch looking just like that prodigal father. Nobody talks as, that much about the prodigal father. They talk about the prodigal son that was welcome back home. But that father never stopped waiting, never stopped loving, never stopped praying. And so listen, if you, let, if you left Greater Life River of Praise and you're just like, I can't come because I won't be accepted, that's fake news. Fake news. Come on back. We love you. We'll hug it out. We will hug it out. I will kiss you on the cheek if I need to. I'm just kidding. No, if you need it, that's fine. With three hugs and then call it a day. We can go back. We can go back. And see, see, this is what you need to realize. There are a lot of people that have come through the doors of River of Praise. That, that, that is, see, this is what some people will say. Oh, you left the church. Well, the devil got them. Their back slid. Oh, they're a mess. Not all the time. It does happen sometimes. But you know, there's a lot of people. That's fake news because a lot of people that left River of Praise, they're worship leaders, they're pastors, they're missionaries, they're plugged in, they're leaders, they're elders of other churches. They, they got a little bit of seed from here and they didn't throw it away. They took it and built on it. Somebody give God praise for that. 
So when you see the family outside of these four walls that don't go here anymore, don't try to gank them from their assignment. But say, hey, if you ever want to visit, Pastor would love to see you. What's wrong with that? See, the truth is, here's, here is the truth. Some are here for a season. Some are here for a reason. And some are here for a lifetime. But if you are part of this body, you can always come home. Somebody give God praise. Come on. This place is like a hospital, a place of healing for the body and the soul. The fake news is once you get your healing, total, everybody say the fake news. Once you get your healing, you don't even need the church that much anymore. Whoo, that's so fake. It's, sometimes it took a lot for you to get your healing. I mean, there's, there's been fasts, there's been intercessions, there's been prayers, there's things that you had to, you had to lay down on the altar and never pe- pick up again. And you got your healing. Can we give God praise for the healings that have come? Wow. From marriages to deliverances, for, for cancers falling off, for the doctor said there's no way, and God says, oh yeah, bet, what's that? Well, now that you got your healing, you don't need the church that much anymore. Fake news. The truth is, the church will help you keep your healing. Mm. God brought a miracle to your marriage. Ah, you need the church to help keep it. Oh, man. One of the best things that ever happened to me is I did not, I did never, never put myself on a pedestal. People tell people try people that love you try to help you or sometimes give you the worst advice because they're not really connected to God like they should. Some pastors have told me, "Hey, let, let get you can only get so close to the people, and that's far. You know, they won't respect you, they won't honor you if you let them get too close because familiarity breeds contempt, right? Let them get too close, and they're not going to respect you, and they're not going to honor you. That's fake news. Look how Jesus did it." He loved and ministered he, thousands of people. And then he, he, he kind of developed a leadership plan for a few hundred people, then down to 70, and then down to 12, and then down to three, and then there was the one he loved. And, and I'm telling you, but you it's, it's okay to have these differentiations, but we need to let people be an influence to us. We need to be connected with people, people that will that that will you can have a conversation with, and they say, Pastor, you know, I, I, I love you, I respect you, but I, I don't know if you got that right. Can we pray together on that one? All right. I'm telling you what, the definition of deception is you don't know that you are when you are. And you need a brother, a sister, a friend that will be there for you. And when you stub your toe, when you crash and burn, and you, I mean, you try to build a bridge in the pond made out of styrofoam, Jesus. They will be the one with chainsaws and pickaxes and shovels out there covered in styrofoam, looking like you in a snow globe together, getting the styrofoam out of the bridge, out of the, out of the pond. And Mike led, we've got pictures of me and you to show that. I'm sorry. Sorry I did that to you. The place, this place, everybody said this place is like a gym. A place of building the spirit and exercising the gifts, exercising our gifts of the spirit. The fake news is people focus on how strong they used to be. Ooh, that's dangerous. Remember that? It's okay to say remember when. It's okay to say remember when. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But there's a reason why. And life is so much like an old school pickup truck. There's a reason why the rear view mirror is this big. And the windshield is this big. You don't don't drive, don't drive like this. We need to look at what is in front of us, forgetting those things which are behind. Reach forward to what lies ahead. I press on 
the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. How strong I used to be? Well, the truth is how God wants us to stay strong right now. This place is like a library. Everybody say this place. It's like a library, a college, a place where people can find wisdom and information and answers. It is a learning center. People say this, and here's the fake news. Say fake news. I have, all I have to do, I, oh, this is arrogant. All I have to do is ask God for wisdom, and he's going to give it to me. My Bible tells me that, so there, there you go. Boy, there's, what do you think about that? How about that? Look at, look at that. All I have to do is ask God, he said, to give it to me without reproach. So you can't tell me nothing. Ooh, come on now. The truth is, and this is correct. All I have to do is ask God for wisdom and he'll give it to me without reproach. True, but, everybody say but. but. We have to move beyond asking and we have to get into doing. We have to read our Bible, and after we read our Bible, how about before we read our Bible, we pray? How about when we read our Bible, we pray? How about after we read our Bible, we pray, we meditate? How about this? You want to grow in your knowledge of the Word of God for what it truly means for you today? It is so simple. Lay down all your preconceived filters. You read the Bible 20 times all the way through. Well, thank you for doing that. But you have these preconceived filters. Well, I know I'm going to read this story about this guy. He had demons. He's in the cemetery. And, and the devil said, don't cast him out before my time. And, and, then, and Jesus threw them in the pigs. And the guys got mad because they lost their bacon. And, and then the guy got healed. And they put on some clothes. and went into town. They want to go on the boat ride with Jesus. Jesus said, no, you can't. The guys in the boat are like, thank you, Jesus, for sending him to town. And he goes to town. And he just says, look at this miracle Jesus did for me. And he was a testimony there. Amen. And we thought we got it all figured out. The word of God is alive. It is alive. I'm telling you, when, it, when you read the, the, the smallest verse in the Bible that says, that says Jesus wept. So, oh, it's, I'm so sad Jesus was sad. No, no, no. He, he bore our wounds and our transgressions. He, he, by his stripes, we were healed, not just from cancer, not just from demonic oppression. We were healed of Fear. We, when you read your Bible, I'm telling you, it becomes alive. Don't, don't just say God gives you wisdom. God gives you fresh wisdom every single day if you ask for it before you read. We have to move beyond asking and getting to doing. When you read your Bible, when you praise, when you have prayer, when you worship, when you're in small groups, when you're feeding your spirit, please, while you're feeding your spirit, do not get in a spiritual rut. I pray these three prayers, and I read these three verses, and then Tommy says his little, reads his poem, and Sally says the Lord's Prayer, and then, and then, and then I, just, I just thank Jesus that he sees us today. And you're going to get somewhere in about the first two times you're together. But let me just tell you this. You need to have life in your small groups, in your family prayer gatherings, in your own Bible study. One of the greatest things you can ever do is what Christian says. He calls it a, a what is it, a, a roulette wheel Bible study. Huh? What does he call it? Shotgun Bible study. Anybody have a shotgun Bible study? It's where you take the Bible, you're running late for work, but you're going to get one verse in before you go. And you go flippity, 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 flip, pop. And it's amazing how many times that is the verse of Scripture that you needed right then. How did God know how to do that? Because he's God. This place, say this place. It's like a factory, everyone working, producing, and giving a united, united effort. Each person has the opportunity to make a contribution to the success of the whole. The fake news is our part is the most important part. It's good that you might think that way, but it's dangerous to think that way too long. The truth is all of the parts are the important part 
Paul began to talk about how important it is to value the other parts of the body that I can't say to the foot, I have no need of you. Can you imagine if there were only eyes? You're not going to get, you're not going to go too far, are you? Hey, eyeball, what'd you say? Nothing. Why? Because we're all eyeballs. Nobody said anything. <laughs> what would you hear? I didn't even know you said anything because I don't have any ears because we're all eyeballs. We need the variety of the body of Christ. We need all the parts. And when you see one part lagging, you don't say, oh, oh it's horrible to be you. No, we need everybody to be a part of the contribution of the whole. We need the body to grow and mature. That was one of Jesus' biggest prayers. This place is like a garden. A place where people flourish and bloom and achieve and love and feel beautiful and produce fruit. The fake news is, say the fake news. Just because you aren't blooming it does not mean hmm, you're not in the right field. People say, I'm not blooming. I guess I'm not planted where I'm supposed to be planted. That's fake news. Have you noticed that some of the most amazing trees are amazing, not because it's the right soil or the right place. It's because it has the right gardener. The beauty of, beautiful thing about gardening and horticulture is, is that we realize at the right time, there's a time to prune. I think a lot more people would be blooming spiritually if they had some things pruned off of their life. Oh, you got some pain? Uh, I think, oh, that happened to you 30 years ago? Oh, that probably needs to be pruned off by now. And but no, we don't need to tell people, oh, you need to get over it. Yes, they do. You, slow your roll, Terry. Let me just tell you, sometimes you need to just, you need to go in that with the peace and the grace and the love of God, a word in due season. How good is it? And go in and gently bring healing to that situation. You want people to get healed more? Model what that healing looks like in your own life. There's the pruning. Sometimes the reason why it's not growing is that it needs a little bit of fertilizer. We're from Texas. We all understand fertilizer. Why is all these things happening to me? It's so terrible. I just, uh, just, I can't stand it. People are messy. I got this situation that I'm working through. Why are these bad things happening to me? Why don't these people like me? Why do I have so much adversity? <laughs> Maybe it's because Jesus is tired of you not producing fruit and you need a little bit of fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> My greatest times of pursuing God came when adversity was pursuing me. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? My greatest times of pursuing God was when adversity was pursuing me. And I said, you know what? I don't care what anybody says. I care what you say. What do you say? Oh, this storm's bad. <laughs> but as long as Jesus is in my boat, it's going to be all right. Peter, Peter, Peter never, Peter never would have walked on the water had there not been a storm. There's another time Jesus was sleeping in the boat. Y'all remember? Crying little babies. <laughs> Jesus, don't you care? Don't you even care? We're dying here. We're about to drown, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus gets up. He looks at them. He says, how long am I going to put up with all of this? How long am I going to put up with this mess? How long are you going to be unbelieving like this? Don't you even know? He stands up in this boat. <laughs> Jesus was getting rocked by the waves too. But he didn't let it bother him. He, said, he didn't even say a word. This is what I love about Jesus. Sometimes he could bring a healing and don't even have to say a word. He went, shh, to the storm, shh. You guys good now? Storm was completely still. Probably Peter. I know it doesn't have it. In, I'm going to write a Bible. It's going to say Jennings translation. 
<laughs> because Peter had to say, when the waves, they're hanging on, they're probably half of them are throwing up and almost falling in, soaking wet, boats half full of water. Jay, we're perishing here, just shh. Shh. Peter said, shut up. Did you even know? Did you did you did you even know he could do that? Did you even know he could do that? That's what he wants to say regarding your storm. You're not blooming because, listen, sometimes you need some fertilizer in your life. You need to be in that place. And this is where growth comes is when we say, I didn't even know you could fix that mess that was attacking my life. Oh. And sometimes you're not blooming. Because it's just not your season. Who wants to hear that? Sometimes it's just not your season. And you just have to wait until it is your season. You got the fertilizer on the ground. You're pruned. You're connected to the gardener. And the sun is coming, the rain's coming, the birds are singing, winter is gone, and spring is here, and baby, you're going to bloom, and you're going to produce fruit because you are connected. You're connected to him, amen. Somebody give God praise. Come on, come on. Almost done. I said, this place is like a fruit stand where the fruit of the Spirit is found in Galatians 5, and it is shared with others as a witness. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Galatians 5.22 needs to be our go-to report card Bible verse. The fake news is you got one of the elements of the fruit of the Spirit and you think you're a success. I do pretty good with self-control. Yeah, okay. The truth is, that's good you got one of them figured out. But let's keep going for the rest. Read it and let it be your report card. This place, everybody say this place. It's like a temple, a place to worship God and to meet with him and to love him. That God's presence is to be manifested to all. Say all who enter. The fake news is, mm-hmm. People will say, well, church ain't for everybody. That's fake news. The truth is, oh, yes, it is. Church is for everybody. Get that straight. Church is for everybody. John 3, 16, Billy Graham's favorite verse, mine too. So, who knew, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 17, which is my second favorite verse. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world or to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. We got to get rid of this fake news that church isn't for everybody. There's a lying hateful world that doesn't like the church. It's antichrist. Oh, the church isn't for you. It's for those stuffy, huffy, puffy, polished, protected. What's the word they're using today? Privileged people. It's not for, it's not for you. Oh, yes, it is for you. We have to understand the people that we see many times day to day are ordained by God for us to see and just be a part of his good news to them. Look at everybody you see this week through the lens of if I do my job and invite them, they may be the person sitting in the pew next to me for the next 20 years. How are we going to treat them? The lady that works on the assembly line next to you that steals all of your parts and blames someone else. What if you tell her about Jesus? And she comes to church and she turns into, into and then everything, everything gets better. The dad that won't quit telling bad, dirty jokes while you're sitting next to him in the stands while your kids are playing Little League baseball together. 
And you always get up. I'm telling my story now. You always get up when the dirty jokes start because you know you're not going to like it and it's inappropriate and you just don't want to fill your head with that. So you go get a hot dog and you come back and you see that he's done telling a joke and you go sit down. Until one day, he starts busting out on the joke. And I'm just about to get up and he stops. And people were looking at me. People were looking at him. And he says, sir, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a pastor of River of Praise Church. And half of those guys sitting there went, ooh, ooh, ooh. Because I done got up 20 times on this guy. Oh, my bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, now it makes sense, he says. Now it makes sense. I never condemned him. But I wonder where it would have been if I saved him 20 of those moments. Instead of walking off, if after he finished telling the first one that everybody else got polluted with, that I just hung out with him. Come on now. Oh, that dirty joke. Don't you, oh, you're afraid it's going to defile you. It's going to defile. Jesus was defiled all the time. And just after everyone else leaves, I don't leave and I say, hey, man, what else is going on in your life? And then I wait for him to. Give me the obligatory question, what's going on in your life? And then he finds after joke one, what, I sh what, uh, what we, the conversation would, we should have had instead of waiting for 20. We have to understand this. Everybody say this place. It's like an army post. Mm -hmm. A place where soldiers are trained and made ready for battle. The fake news is, here, here it is. Everybody say the fake news. The fake news is we act like we're not in the middle of a war. The truth is we're in the middle of a war and things are way more spiritual than we realize. We have to understand the concept of solidarity. Do we have any veterans in the house? Anybody that's, been, that's, come on, let me see. Let's give it up for our veterans this morning. Awesome. Now, some of our guys, I'm not going to point you out, have been involved in FBI, CIA, um, been involved with ATF, been involved with Border Patrol, been involved with um, uh, Navy SEALs, Army Rangers. And you understand, you guys will understand this concept, but I want to give it to you today. It's the concept of solidarity, which means what one does affects all. We need to guard language and culture and attitude and divisiveness because when, when, when all of a sudden we become fractured in, in, in our connection and commitment to each other, that's where the enemy comes in and messes exactly. and destroys lives. We are in the middle of a war. We need to act like it. We need to pray like it. We need to love each other like it. We need to be like the Marines. Hey, we ain't leaving no wounded soldiers behind. Amen. This place, somebody say this place, is like a banquet hall, a place of feasting and fellowship and enjoyment. The fake news is the church is a place where we check off the box of the religious obligation. That's fake news. Did you go to church today? Check. What did the pastor preach on? All you said was, did you go to church? That's the... Did you go to church or did you go to church? Anybody get healed? Anybody get set free? Anybody give their heart to Jesus? As somebody that, that, that didn't have hope, they come in the hope, they come in the church and they received hope. They received healing. They received love. They came in frowning and cussing and fussing. They walked out leaving, leaving, smiling and rejoicing. Come on. It's time that we come on, come on. It's time that we have church. Mm. The truth is, church should be our place of our source of love, life, strength, protection, and contribution. I need you to stand up to your feet just for a second. <laughs>
I want to ask you this question. The question is, it has been asked to me several times. Well, where is the church today? Where's River of Praise today? Where are we at? 20 years, bef- 20 years before, 20 years as you guys being pastors. Now we're in, we do things in 20s. 20, 20, 20, and now we're in a, oh, we just came out of two year 2020 also. 2020, and we had 20, and which was 20 before that 20. Now we're starting a brand new 20. Yeah. Where are we today? This is what I need you to understand. We need you to do this because I'm not playing. We are in the middle of a cultural war. We are in the middle of a spiritual war. This This is no joke. Life and eternity is at stake for some people. And we need, listen, this isn't about, this is not about my ego. This isn't about the church's name, ego. We are doing great. I love what we have. And if God said, listen, you don't need to reach out anymore, that'd be fine. But that is not what God is saying to us today. We're in the middle of a spiritual war and souls are at stake. And what I need us to do, me included, is we need to come to church every Sunday. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come to church every Sunday. Come on. And we need to pray together as a family. We need to pray together with our friends. I don't, listen, I understand, and I pray fast dinner prayers too sometimes. Thank you, Jesus, for this food. Blessed blessed to our bodies. Amen. I pray those prayers sometimes, but sometimes I pray my entire meal. Small groups, we pray. Softball, we pray. We hang out with each other. We pray. Do you pray at work? Your Bible studies. I just want to say this. Another thing we need to do is we need to pray not only with family, but with our friends. You never know what that one prayer could do for their life. We need to get involved. Here it is, number three. We need to get involved in small groups. They have a start time and they have an end time, except for my small group on Monday morning prayer. There's no expiration, but if you can't be there, that's fine. 5.30 in the morning, men, if you want to come, be awesome. We need to be connected. We need to invite people to church. We need to, and we, did I say we're in the middle of a war and somebody just said, it is time. It is time. We need to invite people to church. See, the work of the ministry is celebrated on Sunday. It's not just what happens on Sunday that is the big deal. What happens and is the big deal is what happens. You take Sunday and you take it over into Monday. And you use the message on Sunday, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then you bring the fruit of that harvest to Sunday and people give their hearts to Jesus. Please follow me. The work of the ministry happens outside of these four walls. And we we bring them to the house and they give their hearts to Jesus. And people connect together as a family. And people get healed and they get set free. And people find purpose. We have to be the church. The church isn't a title, isn't a building, isn't a name. It is the people of God coming together for His glory. Somebody give Him praise. 20 years has been great, but the best is yet to come. And God does things in 20s around here, and He's starting this brand new 20. So we're getting right here. You're getting right here at the beginning of a brand new 20. So in this beginning, let's make Jesus Lord and Savior of our life. Come on, turn our hands like this. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for a brand new beginning. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me, forgiving me of my sin, and coming into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior today and for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, giving me brand new eyes and ears where fake news won't hurt me because I'm running towards your truth. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, give the Lord praise, church. Thanks again for watching River of Praise. We hope that we inspired you, encouraged you. And if we did, would you please share this video with your friends and family? Also, if you'd like to support River of Praise, There's a link on the bottom of the screen you can click to give. Thanks again for watching.